Hello everyone, this is Dr. Bob Brown with Community Coronavirus Update number 118. Uh, themes today, will there be an XBB 1.5 surge? Will it be a problem and why is it so hard to get Paxlovid? Answer to the first question is yes, there will be an XBB 1.5 surge because it's already happening. Uh, and so seems to be history keeps repeating. So the surges usually start in the northeast area of the United States and you'll see the XBB 1.5 is taking off and it's the majority of the cases in regions 1, 2 and pretty close in region 3 uh, over in the northeast. And so the question is, well, as those surge, the surge of XBB happen, is it also resulting in hospitalizations? And the answer is yes. Uh, if you look at region one, you can see that there's a pretty big spike in hospitalizations, not to the degree of the last Omicron and uh, alpha waves, but still it's heading up there. Uh, you'll notice that it's a highly age dependent. So the people over 70 are very, very high risk, actually maybe even hitting some prior peaks. So if you're older than 70, you really need to be worried about this. Uh, and some of the younger is still showing up. So probably from 40 on up, there's at least some risk and that should hopefully prod you to do something about it to minimize your risk for being hospitalized. XBB seems to be the most infectious yet, so there's a good chance you're going to get it one way or the other. Uh, although the vaccination will help to prevent some infections, but not all. So there's most of us are going to get it, so it adds more reason to get a booster. Uh, so again, like we've talked about lots of times the last couple of years, that public health is layers of Swiss cheese. No one layer is ever going to be fully effective in, uh, in public health, at least most of the time. So that's why we in public health we rely on layers. Uh, and the three big layers about whether this, so yes, there's going to be a surge, but will it be a problem? Well, the layers of Swiss cheese, number one is vaccination. That's probably the most uh, effective way to start. So get your booster, especially if you're older than 65 or a high-risk health condition. At the age of 53, I got mine, not just, you know, the, my risk of hospitalization is very low, but, you know, if even a 20, 30% reduction in me missing work for a week is worth it, in my opinion. Plus, it does reduce the chance I might spread it to a, a, an elderly family member, a high-risk coworker, for example. Number two. Two, get your Paxlovid or alternative uh, if you get Pat COVID, and uh, especially if you're over 65 or have a high-risk health condition. And so I'll talk about uh, being preemptive about this because I think our public health and healthcare systems have really failed about this. I think it's a last resort whether we'll have to mask up in schools, but the evidence is pretty good that that would work if we had to get there. I just don't think we're going to get there, I hope. So the good news is Lincoln, Nebraska has, still has the highest vac rate, vaccination rates in the state. We're over 57% of our pay population over 65. That's really important because that's the area, the group most likely to be hospitalized. And it shows, uh, the effectiveness I think shows in our, in our hospitalization data. So Brian continues to update uh, every day uh, how many people are in the hospital with COVID and what their vaccination status. You'll see only one up-to-date person in the hospital. Uh, those other 20 probably didn't have to be there if they just would have gotten their darn boosters, uh, and especially over the 65. So I think uh, we have real-time information from Ryan Hospital showing the effectiveness of boosters because most people over 65 in Lancaster County have a booster, but they make up only uh, you know, one out of these 20 people hospitalized. So there you go. Um, Paxlovid's the other big one, so if you really want the full thing, uh, like I said last uh, time, last month, we invited Drs. David Quinby and James Lawler, our two of Nebraska's best infectious disease experts, to run through the data. It's rock solid that Paxlovid is good, effective, and should be used if you're a candidate. Uh, not everybody is. Also pointing out that there's no such thing as Paxlovid rebound. COVID rebounds with or without Paxlovid, orange juice, no matter what. It will. There is a second and a long phase, but Paxlovid does reduce the risk of long COVID as well, and you should not use prednisone in the first week. Uh, there is uh, very good guidelines on this, and so ideally your primary care doctor would have reviewed this with you if you're a high-risk person and a candidate for Paxlovid at your last chronic disease visit, but if not, you should bring this I encourage you to print this out and bring it to your doctor next time you see them if you think you might be a candidate for Paxlovid and talk through it ahead of time such that if you do get COVID, you have a plan on what to do about it. Uh, there's a good article in the, the, this uh, issue of JAMA. Uh, this is a Dr. Christina Mangurian talking about how frustrated she was just getting her own parents treated for Paxlovid. And both times, both her mother and father were not initially treated appropriate, and she had to step in. It shouldn't have to be that way. As a physician, this really frustrates me that our healthcare system is failing this badly. And with her mom, they even one doctor even tried to give her Zithromax and prednisone. Zithromax is not going to help COVID, and, and the prednisone actually might would be increase her chances of death and hospitalization, and she had to stop that. So it's so frustrating this is not being done correctly. So yeah, ideally, our public health system would be better about educating, and our healthcare system would be more proactive, but sometimes it's not. So take matters into your own hands. So if you're older than 65 or if you have diabetes, for example, when you see your doctor next time, talk to them about this and have a plan to get Paxlovid if you're a candidate. Not everybody can take Paxlovid. There are some renal function uh, adjustments, for example. Uh, there are medication interactions, although some of those medications can be held for a week or two. So you know, if you're on a stat and you could, you could 
hold that for a while while you take your PACS load, for example. So, so talk to them and be proactive about it because unfortunately the, PEC, the healthcare system may fail you. Uh, so again, layers of Swiss cheese. I think one and two might take care of it such that I really don't think we're going to need to mask up in schools this spring. However, if we had to, we know it works. So this is a study in the New England Journal that studied the Boston area schools. Uh, when they lifted the, the requirement, each school, the schools, some of them kept in place, some didn't. And they actually followed each of these schools over time and found, followed the COVID uh, rates of the students, staff, and community. And basically, uh, masking in schools was enough to cause about a 30% reduction in community spread. So if we're going to have 100 people in the hospitals, masking in schools could knock that down to 70 and prevent a uh, surge and overwhelming our hospitals. I don't think we'll have to get there, but at least we know this tool is in our toolbox if we had to. You can make an ethical question that if the healthcare system and public health and individuals aren't doing their job, why should the schools have to step in and make up the difference? I think it's a good valid valid concern. On the other hand, sometimes you got to do what you can do to protect your hospitals too. So hopefully we don't get into this discussion in the future, but we might. Uh, so again, minimizing your own risk, you have your individual decision to make that you can make this not happen. One mask when needed. So, and I'll talk about when I would, when I still wear a mask. I don't most of the time, but there's, but mostly it's airport related and, and crowded settings. A uh, step today on your vaccinations, you should have at least two initial COVID vaccines plus that recent bivalent booster and your flu shot. And you may need to take medication should you actually get sick. Do that, and I think we won't need to worry about any of this other stuff. So what did I do? I did get my uh, bivalent booster in September. I do wear a mask in the airport most. I think uh, there's some studies. They, I think they, I read one recent study where they did uh, wastewater testing of planes, and almost every plane had a positive COVID person in it, basically. So when you're in the airport, that is the highest risk setting in, in the world right now for catching any variant of anything, and not just COVID, but influenza and other diseases as well. So for now, I'm going to keep wearing a mask when I'm flying around. Uh, that's uh, to the left. That's me at an airport. Uh, however, I think it's okay when you get up to cruising altitude. At cruising altitude, you've got full ventilation going and people aren't moving around the plane as much. So maybe that guy in the COVID in the back, you're not going to get exposed because he's way in the back and you've got good enough ventilation if your fan's way open. So I just turn my fan on full and then I'll, I'll consider taking off my mask. If you're high risk, you might want to leave it on. Or if like the, you know, I was in Japan in the Japanese subway system, yeah, I wore a mask there because there's lots and lots of people there. Uh, but that's probably about the only place I'm wearing masks, that or a healthcare facility at this point. Uh, maybe I'll change my mind in a month if XBB gets uh, worse. But right now, I don't think we will need it in uh, schools or most community settings. Uh, again, going back to the data on this stuff, the COVID was the third leading cause for cause of deaths for three years in a row. Here we are beginning of January, year number four, and we're having five, we're averaging 564 COVID deaths a, a day right now. If that continues and annualized, that, that would be more deaths from COVID, even in year four, than, than a bad flu year, RSV deaths, car accident, gun violence combined. I don't think that's going to continue. I think we'll get packs this XBB surge and hopefully it'll go down. But so much of this is preventable. Literally 90% of the deaths that we're still having could be prevented if people got their vaccines and took Paxlovid or an alternative when indicated. Uh, and I'll keep harping on this. You know, there was a oh, more than threefold variation in how different states performed on this based on making good and bad decisions, combinations of misinformation, vaccination rollouts, masking when appropriate, things like that. It's too bad that we had to uh, vary that much. Even in Nebraska, there was a more than twofold variation. So the COVID fatality rates in that middle column, that shows the variation in how everybody performed with uh, Lincoln and Lancaster County doing better than all those others. So yes, we did do it right. I think uh, we need to learn our lesson and not mess this up again in the future. Uh, here's graphically what it looks like if you want to see a bar graph rather than a chart of numbers. So yeah, we did it right. Going forward, uh, if you want to stay up to date still, I'd say my two still favorite sources are your local epidemiologist, Dr. Caitlin Jettelina. On the left, uh, sign up for her newsletter. She sends uh, good, timely stuff with great visuals. And if you want more of a clinical focus, I still like uh, Dr. Dan Griffin's update on TWIV every Saturday morning. So living with COVID, get your booster, mask at the airport when you're sick or when you're sick, and if you're high risk, talk to your doctor about a plan, potentially Paxlovid or an alternative. Hopefully this is helpful to you. As usual, the disclaimer, this is my opinion, is not necessarily that of everybody here. All the links to everything I've just talked to you are in the notes section, so you can read up more yourself if you would like to.